Hey, it's me again. It just seems like seconds ago that we were just speaking. All right, well, that I was just speaking. Um, okay, so that went over the syllabus and you know, so your basic uh, guidelines. Uh, let me glance at the International Monetary, but no, 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 that would, there would have been nothing different on, on, on everything that I went over just now. Okay, as I said, I went kind of overboard uh, creating materials for everybody to make sure that you felt as comfortable as possible with the setup we got. Now, you've got this calendar right here, which again, I, th I think would be very useful. It's going to be very useful to me, to be honest, uh, uh, to see you know, what's going on, what day, and so forth. Uh, and, you know, the entire semester summarized right there. Then I also made, and, and I've already shown you in this class, the ecological economics chapter. Let's go over to International Monetary, and I'll show you the equivalent of that. I wonder if I can open two windows at the same time. Oh, there are two instances of TCO online. I'll find out in a minute. All right, content. Uh, you go to overview here, and wham, you get the same thing. And on this one, readings. All right, so there's only one little extra chapter they have to do in containing perspectives. And by the way, in both classes, I cut way back on the outside reading way back, um, which made me sad, but so does coronavirus. Uh, so, readings, I'm going to click on that, and there's one, two, three, three articles that you'll need to read at some point, and you just click on it, and ta-da! Military Cyber Affairs. Um, and uh, there's that. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to try to right-click open link in new window and click here so that they're both open at the same time. Yes, success, all right. Uh, okay, going back to content and content. Uh, this is almost identical in both classes. All right, I, I normally give out a list of study questions as I said earlier that is pretty dang lengthy. Uh, in fact, here's some from, is this the entire class? This is the entire semester for International Monetary, okay? So these are all the study questions for International Monetary that people would over the course, it, it is, uh, how many pages here? 32. However, it starts on page four though, because there's a couple of introductory pages, but still, that's a hell of a lot of pages. It's all typed out here. Uh, so, but the thing was, this was a, a really tight guide to what was gonna be on the test. And with this new format, I didn't have that anymore, and I'm not comfortable um, with that. So what I did was I typed up this how to study for, for both classes. It's almost identical, but I'll, I'll point out where it's not. And let me once again download it so I can look at it in a different window. I'll zoom in a bit. Okay. Yes, yes, very funny, John. Uh, strange times for us all. Don't hear a good question. And then I'm explaining here that I decided to do a bunch of low stakes assignments instead of, instead of the usual three. Um, and I just explained this, the plus about the exam system was that you had a pretty good idea on what was going to be on the test. That's not going to work for this class. And, and I'm just explaining that, you know, um, there are people online regardless of whether or not we end up having the semester go to hell or not. And as I said a minute ago, it would just be way too easy to cheat if we stuck with, you do study questions, and then you study these for the exam, well, shoot, I'm just going to look at it for the exam. Uh, and, um, they, they, you know, we, we ended up doing that at the end of last semester, uh, doing open book despite the fact that everyone had done this, really because we were going to pass everybody. Uh, and I said, hey, block, copy, and paste. Um, but we're going to pass everybody anyway. We're not passing everybody this time. We, we hope to, but uh, often people volunteer not to pass. So, let's see. Yeah, shifted from 3 to 17, but I'm providing less guidance regarding what's going to be on the test. Why would I do such a horrible thing? Because I also did a wonderful thing. All quizzes and exams are open book, open note, okay? So, uh, I don't have something as specific as I do in a regular semester where I say, these are the only questions that can appear on 80% of the points of the exam. All right, there's still the hell questions that you have to figure out yourself uh, without this. But I said these are the only questions that can be on the test. All right, that's it. 
Not this time. But you've got open book, open note. Uh, yeah, and I wasn't going to try to, to, to enforce something different. Still, you need and deserve some guidance, okay, so that you still need some guidance, right? Quizzes. Each covers a specific chapter in the book. If this were international monetary, it would say a specific chapter or a um, reading. In fact, let's look at that. How to study. Oh. Nord VPN wants me to resubscribe. I use that all the time when I was at um, Starbucks working, but I ain't been to Starbucks in a long time. Look, each covers a specific chapter in the book or a reading, right? So that's the only difference between the two. I wrote the quizzes by reading through each chapter in the articles uh, and pulling out important concepts and references. The computer will scramble the test. Like I said, this took forever. And then, of course, you need to try to write, okay, each one's 10 questions with four choices. Some of them are choose all that apply, but the vast majority are just pick the right one. And, uh, well, I'll mention a little bit more about that in a minute. Oh, no, I already said right here. The computer's going to scramble the test questions. Uh, so, oh, I see. That's why I brought it up there. So, you, you won't necessarily be in the same order as you ran across them in the book. But they're still all out of that chapter or all, all out of the reading uh, if it's international monetary. Don't bypass a question. I've set it to where you can't go backwards. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So, how to study. Okay, I would absolutely outline the chapter. I would, I don't have a book up here, uh, but I would, you know, get, this is what I always did in college, as it explains right there, even when I waited till the night before the test to actually bother to read anything, um, I would get out a sheet of paper, and I would start reading, and I would make myself an outline, and as it says here, that absolutely forces you to pay attention. You don't skim over anything when you have to make an outline. Well, I guess you could, but, you know, you're much less likely to. Uh, you know, you have to decide what's important and what's not important. And do I organize these concepts together, to, you know, uh, and so on. And not only is this more effective, and you'll have an outline ready for a quiz that's open book, open note, but even if the specific answer, even if you didn't jot down something that ended up being on the quiz, you'll have so much of a better idea of where everything is in the book. And then you can go back and, you know, and, and, and check it out and find out, you know, oh, I didn't write that down, but uh, that was in section so-and-so. So that I strongly recommend. Now, I know that people, there are going to be people who don't do it. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, you can lead a student to knowledge, but you can't make them think. I made that up myself one day. Uh, let's see. Um, but, hey, those of you that want A's and B's, that's exactly what you're going to do, and it will be very effective. Uh, let's see. Even though, okay, outline the chapters and you will succeed on the quizzes. And it said, I believe, the exact same thing on this one. Except it says chapters and readings in the International Monetary one. Now, in contending perspectives, that's it under quizzes. And then I start talking about the time limits and so forth on the quizzes. But not so in International Monetary because uh, the quizzes in contending perspectives are... Quiz one is chapter two. Quiz two is chapter three. Quiz three is chapter four. It mostly follows that way. There, there's one little exception after the post-Keynesian stuff, but I'll, I'll tell you all that. But it's, but it's a chapter, but that's not the case in International Monetary. In fact, let's go ahead and download this one too. Um, download. And zoom in. So what I did was, and every time I thought I was close to done, I would realize I should do that too. So anyway, I typed all this up. Uh, and notice the stuff in kind of that horn frog purple there. Uh, book chapter one introduction, but don't go any further than page five. All right. Um, so these are all for quiz one. Uh, you click on that Wikipedia entry. Yeah, but just the financial instruments section and stop when you get to speculation. So I'm making sure that you don't, you know, I'm limiting it uh, to um, what's going to be relevant on the quiz, right? So th those are the things you outline for that. Uh, on this one, it's, it's the um, whole thing. And I showed you that earlier, the cybersecurity one. On this one, it's chapter three of the book. Um, on this one, it is this article right here, what John Harvey Dunn wrote, but only to the top of page 396. Don't worry, it doesn't start on page one. Uh, in fact, actually, I guess it starts on page 390. Then, even in the book, I say, oh, stop on page 77 on that one. And on this one, yeah, but you don't need to know the diagrams. And I actually gave some, I guess I should have put these in purple too. I didn't realize I had, done, had not done so. But it's also limiting you on what pages to read right there. Don't worry about the graphs. 
uh, just those pages, and, and so on. All right, so uh, on International Monetary, there's a lot more on there about what the quizzes are about uh, because it's not just chapter two, it's quiz so-and-so. I don't think I have that written down anywhere, though, for Contending Perspectives. I'm going to have to add that. Maybe I'll just add it to this document right here and make the most sense. But anyway, uh, it's a chapter at a time in, in Contending Perspectives, and that's it. Okay, time limit. All right, you've got 15 minutes to answer 10 questions. And why did I pick that? Okay, so, and this is something I really worked on for a long time. First thing I did was, I sat down and took the quiz myself. And I know the answers, but I kind of went through the process of spending the next, as it says, spending the extra time on more difficult ones, reading the options really carefully, because sometimes I've made the options very similar, you know, and you have to figure out which one's different. Uh, and it took me like four minutes and something to finish the test. So I thought, all right, let's just triple that. Let's make it 15 minutes. And then I looked up the research on multiple choice questions in college classes, and it said that 45 seconds per question was ample time to come up with answers. Well, that's seven and a half minutes on a, on a, on a uh, 10 question exam, so I'll double it, all right? So that, that should be, uh, that, that's reason number one, that it seemed like by a variety of different measures, 15 minutes was plenty. Reason number two, I wanted to make sure you'd actually read and understood the chapter. The more time you have, the more you can just sit and read the chapter while you're, while you're taking the quiz. Uh, and then you'll just be harvesting for answers. You won't be really understanding it. And I don't want that. I want you to learn it. Right? And then question number, or point number three and last, I and everyone I know on campus is really worried about cheating and how the hell we're we going to keep track of it when we don't have you there in front of us. Um, and not the vast majority of people. Obviously, it's it's a few people who are taking advantage of, of the circumstances, and it's disgusting, really, that they have so little respect for you and for me that they would take advantage of the situation like that. And that's why it is so infuriating, uh, and why I spend, you know, and, and again, this is a big discussion on campus among the professors. What am I going to do? I decided, open book, open note. I wasn't going to fight that fight. Um, but what I don't want is somebody on their cell phone to somebody else taking the quiz, which I'm not going to be able to stop. i got to be realistic about it. Uh, saying, what'd you get for number three? Well, there's a problem. Your number three and their number three is not going to be the same one. And the answer choices are going to be mixed up on every exam, too. Plus, uh, it's a 10-question quiz, and so you therefore make up more questions than you need. All right, uh, and then it, it randomly draws from a pool. It's actually pretty cool. It does this, but it'll randomly draw from a pool of questions a, a, a set number. You can even say, well, "I want one of these two, though, because one of these two here that that's on the topic of so and so." You can even specify, you know, one of these two, one of those three, that sort of thing. So, all of that is just to stop people from cheating. You can't go backwards to the test. Once you input the answer, that's it. On to the next question, and. For some reason, at the bottom of every page is the submit button, which submits the whole test. I, and I think it probably says, are you sure? But you want the next button, not the submit button, until you're down to number 10, in which case it doesn't give you a next button. It only gives you a submit button. So, as I say here in this next paragraph, I'm so sorry. I have to create so many inconveniences for the honest people. I was shocked by the number of people I caught cheating in spring 2020 back when the only reason we were going to fail people is if they were caught slashing the tires of the chancellor's car. They had absolutely no respect for me or their classmates. On the plus side, they were all reported to the dean's office and they'll all be retaking those courses. Um, perhaps they're retaking them now. Okay. That's the quizzes. Again, I'm going to need to, after I get done with this, I, I, I think I need to have a list on the contending perspectives, even though it's much more straightforward, like this, for what's on quiz one, what's on quiz two, and so forth. But Because um, there is one place where it goes out of order eventually. All right, let's see. Reflections, free points, say whatever you want. And then I've already told you all this, uh, that, um, it, but it helps me figure out where you are and if you're keeping track. All right, three exams. While the quizzes are making sure you read the chapters or, as it's going to say over here, the chapters in the reading. Yeah, chapters in the articles. Um, the uh, exams go much deeper. Do you, and it's basically like hell questions, right? Uh, those of you who have my class before. Do you not only know the concept in question, but can you also apply it to a unique situation or show how changing an assumption will alter the conclusion? The exams will definitely be based on the material uh, 
associated with the three quizzes that led up to it, there's always three quizzes in an exam, but tend to rely more heavily on the lecture videos. And that's because it's the lecture videos where I cover the most complex ideas. And then I thought, and again, I'm thinking, I don't want to do this. I'm tired. But I thought, now nah, you got to make a list. So anyway, here's a dang list for you. Uh, exam one, international, Mon I'm sorry, containing perspectives. What's on it? Material you studied up to the, it's still open book, open note, all right? It's still open book, open note, the exams too. The material you studied for the three quizzes leading up to this exam, and then these concepts, validity and cogency, Kuhn's normal and revolutionary science. Some of these are not even in the book. Some of these I just cover uh, in lecture, all right? And they're all covered right now on YouTube. And over here, the material you studied for the three quizzes leading up to this exam. All right, validity and cogency. Balance of payments, you know, th th there's a list of all the things you need to know for exam one, and then for exam two, and then for exam three, all right, in, in all those cases. Oh, sorry. Um, and uh, this has the same note on both of them. As you can see, the final is meant to be comprehensive. Uh, but, again, open book, open note. I'm holding off on how comprehensive until we see whether or not the world has gone to hell by then. That will be the one silver lining if we all end up in the hospital less material on the final. So how much I end up doing comprehensive, we'll see once we get there. Um, if everything goes great, then bad news will be, yeah, everything we've done before. But again, it's still open book, open note. All right, so I hope that's helpful to you uh, in figuring out how to do all the assignments as a, as a guide. And it's very simple to start with in both classes, start outlining the readings. Don't, do not, the 15 minutes is not enough to figure out the answers. You have to be going back and finding them again, answers you already had uh, learned before. Let's see here. The next thing I want to show you here in both classes, and here it's going to be absolutely identical. Uh, let's see, there's the extra reading, the ecological economics. And over here, it's a whole set of extra readings because it's uh, several different articles. But then, article reviews. You may go through the entire semester never doing one because the only point here is to make up for a missed quiz. As I said earlier, I foolishly thought to myself, you know what, maybe no one will miss a quiz all semester. That'd be awesome. But global pandemic, 18 quizzes between two classes and almost 60 students, somebody's going to miss a quiz. So I needed to already have in place something to take these, you know, it, again, you have to be, you have to be determined that there was a good reason you missed the quiz. Um, but uh, once we decide that, then yes, you should be allowed to make it up. But I, I don't have time to write another quiz. Uh, and I don't even know how I would make one. So what I decided on was, uh, and I haven't decided on the articles yet because it's going to depend. Maybe, maybe nobody misses quiz one and I don't have to worry about this for quiz one. But I'm going to pick an article and you're going to review it. And up here is the article review assignment sheet. I also thought to myself, oh, all right, I'm going to make sure I fix that later. Um, it's not there. There it is. It's, it's, in, it's international monetary. I left that out of containing perspectives. Um, here's the article review assignment sheet. You would download this and you would write your answers on it. This is in lieu of a quiz grade. Please use this document and give responses everywhere you see blue. I, I thought that way you don't miss out where you're supposed to give an answer, right? So uh, put in uh, the um, answers after the blue font. You should expect the assignment to be at least two pages in total. Be absolutely sure to use quotation marks where appropriate and to cite page numbers everywhere. You are directly, everywhere you're directly referencing something from the work in question. Uh, and I will assign the paper, all right? Because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find something that's similar to, you know, whatever we've been talking about. Uh, as much as possible. Now, by the way, um, this doesn't mean you, pro you still shouldn't go back and outline the chapter because that's still going to be exam material. And uh, another thing I had in mind here was I didn't want to make it attractive to miss the quizzes because what I really want is you to take those quizzes. I really want you to learn those chapters. That's my, that's my primary goal. And so this is not tricky, but it's a lot of work. All right. So, uh, so okay, you can make it up. Um, and this will be useful. Uh, in fact, I quite enjoyed, well, to some extent, uh, putting all this together. I, I spent a long time making up, the, I, I looked at a whole bunch of other examples online of how to do this, and I, I, you know, I altered them to my purposes. Um, it adds up to five points, just like a quiz would. 
Uh, so that's exactly, you know, I've shown you where all the points are. Your name, I'm not going to give you any points for that. All right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expect you to get that right. Uh, then the journal article citation, what was the purpose, hypothesis, or aim or objective of the study? Write down the exact, now on this one, on number one, you write down the exact statement that, that the author made uh, about what they were trying to achieve and include quotation marks uh, and indicate page numbers. That's worth 0.75. Describe the thesis. Now, now do number one again, but in your own words. Then three, and this is, I thought this was a very, I saw this on somebody else, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, uh, what was the gap in the research that the authors were trying to fill by doing their study? Because you always say, you know, and so far no one's ever done this. Uh, and um, you hope that the referees don't find out that there are six other people who have done it. How was the thesis supported? You know, here's what mainly, you know, the sort of main part of the argument. What were the major conclusions, and did you find it persuasive? Okay, uh, and it should be two pages. Now, um, I did two more things here. Ooh, don't let me forget to upload that. Uh, I'm worried that I'm going to forget to do that. Let's see here. File associated with topic cannot be found. All right, I'll, I'm going to leave that page open so I don't forget. All right, because everything else is going to be exactly the same thing. The two classes. Uh, here is the rubric. And I've got one built in to D2L that I can use, but basically, your journal citation, uh, it's worth a half a point. Hey, if it's complete and done, psh, if it's you know, mostly done, but you left some stuff off, 0.25, and if it was really careless, you're not going to get anything on it. Now, on all of the following six items, 0.25 is always associated with you didn't do a good job citing. You didn't do a good job, uh, you know, attributing things to the original authors. Uh, you know, otherwise, accurate, partial, inaccurate, accurate, partial, inaccurate. Um, I think the only one where it's not kind of like that was the very last one. Uh, was it persuasive? Uh, and and uh, you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for you giving a thoughtful answer. Now, you know what I hate? College. No, wait, that's not it. Um, I hate it when I'm be given an assignment. And I was like, oh, okay. What do you expect me to do on that? I spent about two hours this morning writing this. Because I thought, if I were you, I would sure want an example. Now, you, again, you may go the entire semester without ever having to do this, but someone's going, a number of people I'm sure will have to at some point. So, so I, I filled one out. Your name here, John T. Harvey, I got that right. Uh, article citation, I just picked out one of my own articles. The, which you'd think, hey, that must have been easy for you. I wrote it 30 years ago, so no, it wasn't. Um, Institutions and the Economic Welfare of Black Americans, 1980, Journal of Economic Issues. What was the uh, you know, hypothesis or the, the thesis? And, and there it is. It's a direct quote. And I want to point something out, out here before I go any further. See all the footnotes, or endnotes, rather? I have greatly annotated this so that you could see why did I do that? Uh, ra rather than mixing up in the assignment kind of the, s some of the instructions and things to look for, um, I, I put quotes in. Like, uh, where you had to put in the, the, the citation for the article, man, the easiest thing to do is to go to Google Scholar and plug in the information to find the article, and then it will give you a... Here. Oh. I'll use the remote... Con or the uh, wireless keyboard. Uh, let's see. Google... Scholar, I think I typed it right, but it's very forgiving. No, it didn't. I didn't type it. Oh, I didn't need to do that. All right. RV, up to misspelled that. Yeah, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't actually see the screen. Uh, uh, okay, I misspelled that horribly, but it did not figure it out. Um, okay, Journal of Economic Issues. Journal of Economic Issues. Harvey, John T. What else was in the dang title, John? Institutions. Well, actually, I don't guess Americans was. Or was it? Again, I don't have my glasses on, so I'm guessing what that says. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy this and paste it in. <laughs> I can't see what the heck I'm doing from back here. Did I misspell Harvey? I think that was screwing it up. Well, here it is. Okay. I click on the quotation mark. All I got to do is like 
copy, paste, done. All right, so uh, when you do the, so it's just telling you, hey, here's a really easy way to do the article citation. Um, it's saying, you know, why did I bother to cite this but not that? Because remember, on each section, on the, each of those six sections, 0.25 is just with me being satisfied that you cited things correctly, that you, you put in Harvey 1991, page 116. Um, and there should be lots of those. In fact, I say up here, you should, you should have to do that in one, two, three, four, five, and six on all of them. Now, another helpful hint, and I went a little over two pages. Another helpful hint I gave was this. This section four here is going to be the longest. Hey, what'd they say? Uh, and I wrote it last for that reason, because I started it, and then I thought, well, I mean, literally, I think what you would have thought. Well, I wonder how long I should go on about this crap. Uh, and then, so I went ahead and finished five and six next. Uh, what were the major conclusions? Okay, I'll skip to the end of the article and find the major conclusions. And then, was it persuasive? And I'll skip to the, you know, that and do that. And then I knew how much room I had left to fill in. So that, that helped with that. So anyway, long story short, um, and there's lots, of, there's lots of notes back here to help you uh, write that. So if it does come around... Hopefully, I've already addressed a lot of questions that you might have there, and then we won't have to worry about that as much. The very last thing that is linked there, in case you had some curiosity, uh, there is the original article that, uh, that I, I, was, I was reviewing this article. And I think that's everything. So I've got to remember to uh, put in on... Okay, let me find this real quick. Put in which exam or which quiz is what uh well, i'm not gonna uh, i was looking to see what i had recently opened but it was a long time ago so I'll, I'll add that to the how to study for contending perspectives and i hadn't uploaded something for contending perspectives otherwise i think that's it do you have any questions any questions no good content activities Oh, well, let me show you what John Harvey sees for quizzes if he's a student. I've already got all the dates and um, for international monetary. Actually, for contending perspectives, it does say this. I'm going to click on activities, quizzes. Chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. But I'm going to put it in another place too. But it is already here. Uh, Here's where we go from chapter 6 to chapter 8, for reasons I'm not going to bother explaining right now, and then 7 and 9. Uh, but otherwise, it just goes chapter by chapter, skipping chapter 1. Um, and I think that's everything. So, hey, let's hope this all goes well. Uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to actually seeing Homo sapiens again. Uh, well, I guess I see Melanie, and I assume she's a Homo sapien. I don't know. Uh, but um, otherwise, yeah, that's everything. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, either I've already seen you on Tuesday, or I'll see you Tuesday, or I'll see you Thursday, or I've already seen you on Thursday. Au revoir.